If you clicked on this video, that means you already got the bug. I'm sorry, because you know you're already going to spend some money. You know you're going to buy something. You're going to do it. You know you're going to do it. It's coming. And so what that means is you got to figure out, am I going to go kind of beginner route and just dip my toe? Am I going to spend a little bit of money and get into it? Or are we going full on hardcore? The options are endless. And with VR now, it's incredible because as the VR headsets get better, the experiences get better along with it. And with the Quest 3, I'm so excited to share with you the money I just spent, the gear that I just bought, the rig that I just put together for less than $1,500. And if you jump on some of the stuff that I'm doing in this video today before the end of the Black Friday deals, I'm going to save you over $200. We're getting into this from what I considered, everything that I had to think about before making the decisions that I made, the decisions that I made, and how I feel about them. It's all coming up right here in this video. I'm so excited to share this all with you. I did so much research for this. Just kick your feet up and let's enjoy. All right, so what are the things that I considered to start space? Am I gonna leave this thing out or am I gonna fold it up? Because I live in a one bedroom apartment, as you can see, and there ain't a lot of room. So here are some options and I gave the links in the descriptions right down below in this video for every single thing that I'm about to talk about in this whole video. So if you're curious about anything at all, just go ahead and click through those links. And if you buy through them, it's going to help me. So thanks for supporting the channel from the bottom of my heart, really. So starting things out uh, with the folded up options, we've got a foldable cockpit, which is the, the whole seat and, you know, somewhere to put your feet. Now you're not getting your wheel or your belt, your, any of the pedals or any of that stuff, but it's the cockpit with a chair and it's $250 on sale for 183. It's the next level racing GT Lite foldable simulator cockpit. I like this thing and it's cool. I love that it folds up. The only the only issue here and the reason I didn't go with this is because I found after doing some research is that people who are at least a little bit lighter like me, I'm under if you're under 200 pounds probably like I'm 150 pounds soaking wet. I don't weigh a lot of of weight. So like if I they say if you slam on the brakes, if you really put a lot of force down, you almost can't put a lot of force on. It'll lift the chair off the ground because it's basically, I mean, you're racing on a pool chair. That's kind of what it looks like. And for 250 bucks on sale, 183, I think there's got to be a better option than that. Love that it folds. And if you're not really worried about slamming on the brakes or putting too much force down, or if you probably weigh over 200 pounds, I think it probably wouldn't have to worry about it. Well, then this is a pretty good option for you. But if you didn't want to do that, you still wanted to go the folding route. Maybe we could look at a stand, and it's a little bit cheaper here at $150, the GT Omega Apex Racing Wheel Stand. Now, again, link below if you want to check this thing out. It's pretty sweet. It's sturdily made. It's a foldable option. You can put it away. It doesn't come with the seat, but what you'll notice is that it has a tray for you to put your chair front wheels. If you were to use like an office chair, you would put your front wheels, the two front wheels, in the tray of the stand, which then would keep the stand from moving and creeping away from you as you use the pedals. Because if you didn't do that and you just push down on the pedals, it's just going to creep and creep away. Just like, you know, bass drum for a drummer or like even like piano pedals, if you know, as a musician, they just walk away from you as you start putting force on them. So you have to do things to mitigate that. So uh, what you, what they did is they made this tray for you to put your wheels of a chair inside the tray and then that, you know, the chair you sitting on it will keep anything from moving forward. The problem that I found with that is that if I really want to get into this and I'm going to spend, you know, if I'm going to spend either 800 or 1200, that's a lot of money either way. Right. If I'm going to spend 900 or 1300, that's a lot of money either way. So I don't want to get anything that I don't love. At, you know, after two months, everything's going to wear off and, you know, all the newness of it. I still want it to be good so that I love it. So I started really thinking about, like, how does this work if I were to do that? If I was in this chair right here, would I enjoy that? Would I appreciate that? Well, the reason I think no, at least for me, is because. These chairs, these desk chairs spin, right? So even if I have the two front wheels in that tray and I'm not going to be going forward or backwards, if I were to do anything, you know, movements that you're going to do as driving, it's spinning my butt in the seat. Imagine you driving right now and in your car, like think about when you're driving. Could you imagine what it would feel like if your chair was spinning? Probably, probably not great. It would just take away right there. I was like, oh, no, uh-uh. I would need to have a fixed chair. So maybe like a, a foldable chair that doesn't turn would work. I don't really have that option. And even that's going to feel really cheap and not be comfortable at like a long race or anything like that. So that option didn't work for me either. 
Which leaves us with one more question. If I wanted to leave it out, what can I get? And that came to the Play Seat Trophy, the Logitech G Edition Sim Racing Cockpit. This thing's badass. I mean, look at it. Yeah, it looks sick. But why would I not want this? First of all, it doesn't fold. You're going to have to leave it out. That's fine. We already know that. It's a leave it out option. But do you see a place to put your shifter? At least we had that on the foldable one. This one doesn't even have a place to put your shifter on your right or your left side. Do you see that? Where would you mount a shifter? It doesn't have that. You actually have to buy an extra thing, like an extra bracket mount for the gear shift and handle brake holder. And that's an extra $52 on sale, on sale from $70. No big deal, being that the original play seat trophy cockpit itself cost $600 before you even have to add on the, the bracket. Dude, dude, $675 for the cockpit alone. Before we get into anything else, uh uh-uh. Nope, sorry, not having it. So I started looking around and I found what I went with, which is the Dardu G29 Racing Simulator Cockpit with seat shifter. I can pull a lever and, and go forward or back, just like I'm in my car. Oh yeah, but it won't spin. It won't spin. Comes with the seat, comes with mounting, it's going to be a, a leave it out option, but this racing cockpit is designed with a flange structure providing professional, stable, and safe driving equipment for professional racers. The steering wheel frame supports six adjustment positions. The angle can be adjusted between zero and 45 degrees. Did I mention it's half the price? Oh yeah, it's half the price at 315. Thank you very much. A savings of $95 right now if you were to go to buy it right now before the Black Friday savings go, go away. So, Savings of $95, it, it comes, I got the red seat, the seat material is made of smooth artificial simulation PU leather, it's compatible with most wheels, the universal design for the wheel mount, it fits almost all Logitech Fanatec Thrustmaster series racing wheels, including pedals and gears, especially fits Logitech G25, G27, G29, G920, which are all the intros, and of course the Thrustmaster T300s. The TXs, all the good stuff. This thing is everything you need. It comes with somewhere that you can mount your shifter and a handbrake, and it's $315 right now. That's more than half off. Dude, done. I don't care. It's called a Dardu instead of a Logitech. I've never heard of the brand. Oh, well, whatever. I'm saving half the money there. And that $300, I can go take and buy a handbrake. Handbrake's 300 bucks. We're about to get to that. So you'll see. I'd rather take th- th- that $300 in savings and go get an extra thing that will make it so much more immersive, like a shifter or a handbrake, rather than having it be like this much better just because it's this much more durable. We'll see when it gets here, but that's the decision I made and that's why I made it. I'll do a whole review, of course, when everything gets here, but that's why I'm going with the Dardu G29. And if you want to, the link is in the description below. You can get one yourself. And now... The fun stuff. The wheel. Oh, man. You'd think that this was easy because it's like, okay, you're probably thinking Logitech, maybe Thrustmaster, Fanatec. Do you care about the force feedback and how much it's going to fight you when you turn, right? Is it going to really feel like the wheels are, are, are going to feel on the road? That's what everybody is spending the money on. If you don't really care about this emulating real life situations, get a Logitech. It's They're the, they're the entry level and you're not going to care that there's not a ton of force feedback, which is like when you turn, you can feel the road kind of like working against you. Um, It is, you know, obviously if there was, if it was just like a free spinning wheel and you were just like to turn right to go right, that wouldn't feel real, right? There's all, there's all kinds of force that you feel when you're driving a car and these wheels are meant to emulate that. So you can spend just a couple hundred bucks on an entry level one for a Logitech. What I ended up doing is going with the middle option. I don't need... A Logitech has two Newton meters of force. A Fanatec has 10. That's eight times, I'm sorry, uh, four times, five times, good math. That's five times as much force that I definitely don't need. However, from my motorcycle driving days, I know that if I get the entry level here, I'm going to outgrow it. As soon as I get used to it, I'm going to want something more, like a 250cc. You're going to love it for the first month, and then you're going to be like, so what else is out there? Because it's like, "Mm, okay, this is kind of boring now. It only goes like 70 miles an hour before it hurts my ears. Nobody wants that. So, again, also, the entry-level ones are pretty loud. I decided to go with the Thrustmaster, the T300 series. They're stronger. They're They're quieter. There are more options for you to choose different wheels because they have a quick release system so you can put different wheels on it. And that's what I decided to do. Instead of just getting a wheelbase and a wheel together with the pedals, the pedals that come entry-level with the Thrustmaster T300 
Ain't going to cut it. We'll get to pedals later, but if you don't upgrade your pedals, you're not going to get as much of an immersion. So I ended up going with the, the, the decision to build the, the wheel on its own. You can do that. You can get just the wheel base, which I did. I got the Thrustmaster T300 servo base. It's a racing wheel base with a brushless servo motor, dual belt mechanism, heart technology, rotation angle, adjustable up to 180 degrees. It's officially licensed for all the stuff, PS3, PS4. Of course, I don't care because I'm just going to be using this on PC. So that's all that mattered for me, and that's what it is compatible with. Industrial class brushless servo motor, super smooth and seamless force feedback, ultra responsive and realistic force effects with no latency, new dual belt, friction-free, optimized mechanism, smooth and seamless action, super silent system. Internal memory and its upgradable firmware, which I really liked. So with a PC compatibility, you can upgrade the firmware as things get better and better. Adjustable from 270 to 1,080 degrees. Oh, yeah. And a Thrustmaster quick release system that lets you quickly change racing wheels. Awesome. All right, so I'm pumped about this thing, but what wheel am I going to put on it? So I got the wheelbase. Great. And how much was that? That was 230 Okay, so my cockpit, 315 The wheelbase, now 230 I'm going to tally this all up at the end for you and tell you what you can save if you were to buy it before the end of Black Friday deals go away. So what wheel am I going to add to it? Oh, for 170 bucks right now on sale from 200 so we're saving 30 bucks here. The Thrustmaster F599XX Evo 30, the Alcantara edition. Oh, baby. I'm so pumped. Look at this thing. Realistic, high quality, sturdy materials. 8 to 10 scale replica of the wheel of the 599XX Evo. Officially licensed by Ferrari. Hand-stitched wrapping crafted of the same Alcantara as that used on Ferrari wheels. Imported from Italy for the authentic feel. For 170 bucks? Oh, hell yeah. The wheel structure is identical to automotive standards, featuring polyurethane molding for a more flexible touch and enhanced comfort, and an internal hoop made of steel for improved transmission of driving sensations and of the force feedback effects, making it feel way more realistic. Large size in diameter for greater immersion in games, 2 millimeter thick brushed metal central steering plate, weighs less than 2.6 pounds, inertia, and super responsive force feedback. Two large wheel-mounted sequential paddle shifters move with the wheel. New ergonomic design for optimized positioning of the fingers. Plus metallic paint, high-end tack switch, life cycle exceeding 10 million uses. Detachable wheel using the Thrustmaster quick release system. And the reason you might want to do that is because, yeah, cool, you're riding on this and you're playing some games. But then maybe you want to play an F1 game. Check this thing out. You could upgrade, get this secondary wheel. And then with the click of a button, you take your Alcantara wheel off and put on your F1 wheel and you start ripping it that way. Oh, yeah. See, this is why I went with this whole system because it gives me the ability to get a new wheel if I feel like I'm kind of tired of the old one or maybe something breaks. I can add or upgrade or just get a different one. You can get protection plans on them. And for 170 bucks for each wheel, depending on which one you get, um, you know, that's, that's doable for me. And that was the reason that I went with it. So that's the one I got. And that's the one I'm pumped about. The Thrustmaster F599 XX Evo 30 Alcantara. Let's go. Moving on to the shifter because it's not racing. If you're not shifting, let's go. What are we doing here? I got the Thrustmaster TH8A gear shifter. I checked it is compatible with windows 11. It didn't say that originally, so I was like, oh, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. But yes, it definitely is. It's 180 bucks right now on sale from 200 so that's another $20 in savings. There's a link in the description below. It's solidly built and precise. The TH8A is crafted of 100% metal. It features the heart technology, which is Hall Effect Accurate technology. It's patent pending with precision that won't decrease over time. Thanks to its contactless magnetic sensors, there's no tack switches or potentiometers for an unlimited product lifespan. Unique design allowing for two different driving styles. So you can do the H pattern, seven plus one with reverse. And then of course, sequential, if you wanted to do plus minus up down. So you've got all the options right there. It's multi-platform PC, and it works with any of the wheels available in the video game accessories market. Awesome. So that's what I'm looking for, right? Compatibility. And I'm going with one ecosystem, so I'm basically doing everything Thrustmaster. So that's the one I got, 180 bucks. Let's shift gears. <laughs> Gotta get some pedals, right? And like I said, if you go with like the GT series for the Thrustmaster T300, eh, or the RX, I think it's called, it's like the, the entry-level pedals. Mm, why don't people like them? 
Immediately, if you start doing research, people will be like, oh, they're okay, you know. Why do you need load cell technology in your brake pads? I don't know. Do I even know what load, sec- load cell technology is? I didn't before I started researching all this stuff, but now I do. I'm so glad I bought it. So when you push down your gas pedal in a car or wherever in the game, the more you push down your gas pedal, it tells the car the faster you want to go. Nah, less fast. More fast, less fast, right? Faster, nah, less fast. Okay, it's not like that with braking. Braking is more about pressure. How hard are you pressing down? We're really only going to go like that far. There's not a lot of travel. So it's not like brake harder, brake harder, brake hardest. It's not like that with brake pads. It's like, <clears throat> or, <clears throat> right? I'm just tapping the brakes. Or I'm slamming the brakes, but it's not a travel issue. It's a pressure of how hard you're pushing. So the entry level ones, that's the best I can explain it. They only read based off of travel. So your braking is not really lifelike. But if you get the ones just for like, you know, 80 bucks more with load cell technology, it's going to show as much, it's going to be really based on how much pressure that you're putting on it, just like in a car in real life. So that's why I went with the Thrustmaster TLCM pedals, compatible with everything. And of course, PC, they've got magnetic sensor technology with no contact or potentiometers for unlimited lifespan. Again, I love that, just like the shifter. Load cell force sensor technology up to 220 pounds of pressure for the perfect amount of braking power, adjustable mechanical brake force thanks to the set of six springs included with the pedal set for a multitude of quick adjustments. Awesome. Love it. Independently adjustable pedals, spacing, and inclination for optimized gaming comfort according to the user's preferences and calibration software even allows for adjustment of the brake force plus the dead zone for all three pedals. I mean... Give me a break. And of course, there's one thing left on our list. That's the handbrake. And I'm able to buy this for $300 extra because I saved $300 on the cockpit when we went with the lesser, just by a little bit, with the Dardu, right? You can see now why I wanted to do this. These things are starting to add up, right? So let's do this. I got the Thrustmaster TSSH sequential shifter and handbrake. This TSS handbrake Sparko mod, it's a two-in-one device that offers both modes. So you can go progressive handbrake or sequential shifter, meaning brake harder as I pull harder or click a button, shift up, down, right? Shift up, shift down, shift up, shift down. So if you didn't want to get the shifter and you just wanted to have a push up or, or pull down, then you could do that and put it in uh, sequential mode. The knob is the exact replica of the genuine knob equipping products in the Sparco's rally and drift range, ensuring maximum realism. And it features Thrustmaster's Heart Halifax Accurate technology while boasting 90% high quality metal components, steel and aluminum, <laughs> ensuring optimum solidity. Love it. Why do you need a handbrake, though? Well, if you're going to do any drifting games. And I figure, you know what? Like, I might as well just do it all now because I'm putting it on a credit card. I got 0% for 18 months. I'm going to pay it down. That's how I'm doing it. So I'm like, you know what? I might as well just do this all in one, and then I will have it. And when I start playing drifting games where I want to, like, and like slide all around the track, you you need a handbrake. You don't want to be pressing a button for handbrakes, especially when you're going for full immersion. So I wanted that. That's why I got it. And that's what I decided to do. That's my full rig and all of what I got. But what is this thing going to cost me? Before we get into any of this, I'm assuming that you have some sort of headset and gaming computer. If you don't, you're at least going to have to get a PS5 and the PSVR 2. Because then there's some games that you can play in there. But you're going to need a headset and a PC computer. I have two options for you. The Quest 3 is what I would do 100%. It's $650. And then a desktop that you can get. Now, people think expensive when you're talking about a PC VR desktop, but I'm going to get you one here for under 1200 bucks. I can do it. Watch. All right, so check this out. I use an Omen computer. It's an HP Omen 30L liquid cooling gaming desktop. All right, Things, the, the link is in the description. Link in the description. But the thing is great. It's $1,100, and there's only one left. So if you do want it, you're interested in it, it's on Amazon, but click the link. There's only one. That's what it says. Mm, Good luck. Now, that one's got a GeForce 3060, which will get it done. Mine's a 3060, and I play all the games. But if you want for the same exact price, just $50 more, a NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4060, it's also on Amazon. It's got the link in the description. It's an empowered PC Mantis V2 Gamer desktop. Going to have all the stuff that you need right there and it's going to get you for $1,100 for the for the desktop it's not that bad but you're going to need some sort of monitor right well 
you're you're going to spend like three hundred and fifty dollars if you go and look for a thirty two inch monitor. If you look for a thirty five inch monitor, but why do you need a monitor if you're not going to be using it to look at during the games? Right, we're going VR. The whole thing about this is I'm not worried about how it's going to look in real life because I got VR showing me the headset. The only reason I need a monitor is to be able to navigate through if I need to like click on stuff. So I'm going to get a very cheap option and I'm going to look at a TV, an HD TV instead of a monitor because that's all we need. And an HD TV instead of $350 is 150 bucks right now on sale for 80. Yeah, that's right. For 80 bucks, you can get your TV Hook it into the back of your, your computer. Now you have your monitor. You do not need to spend $350 on a monitor. Don't do that. That alone right there, what did we just get for $170? Bucks? That could be your wheel. That could be a whole new wheel right there. Easy, right? So spend smart. Spend smart. Spend on the things that matter to you and not on the things that don't. Now you've got a desktop and you've got the monitor. You've got all of the gear for your cockpit. you got all of the gear for your rig. So how much is this going to actually cost? Let's run the numbers and I'll get you out of here with an idea of exactly what you can save for, spend for, budget for, or all of it. Here we go. I'm going to assume that you have a headset and a desktop and a monitor. We're just going to assume that. If you didn't, that was about $1,900 when we totaled it up. So there it is. Add that to whatever we're about to say. But assuming that you already have some sort of VR headset and a desktop and a monitor, then we spent $315 on the cockpit, $230 on the wheelbase, 150 on the wheel, 180 on the shifter, 230 on the pedals, and 300 on the handbrake. Without the headset and the desktop and the monitor, that's a total of 1425 with savings of $215. Those are the numbers. Do with them as you please. But what I ended up doing is using one of my credit cards that I had a very low balance on, but it was like I think I have like $300, $400 left on that credit card. And I added all of this onto my Amazon cart, bought it with that credit card after applying for a new credit card with 0% balance transfers. I'm not telling you to run your life on credit. I am very smart about how I do my credit stuff. If I'm, I, oh, I don't like paying for interest. As soon as any kind of interest starts hitting up, I transfer it over to something with 0% interest. So that's how I'm paying for this. I used a credit card. I bought it all on Amazon. And then within the, this first month before my, my next payment, I'm going to use a balance transfer onto my new balance transfer credit card. And then that's all I'm going to use that for. That's it. That's all that will be. Okay. I have a credit of like seven credit score of like 740. I have very good credit. So I actually applied for this card and had it within five seconds. And then it's available right here, ready to go for my balance transfer so that I can take this $1,500 or however much you need to spend then you have 18 months to pay that off with 0%. That's the only way I would say to do that on credit. Do not buy stuff on credit right now. Let me repeat. Do not use credit to buy anything right now if it's not going to be 0% because these rates, they're stealing money, man. They're just taking it from you, okay? So please don't do that. This is not financial advice. This is what I'm doing, and I'm excited to do it, all right? So this is everything that you need to know. This is everything that I did. It's all in the mail. It's going to all get here in the next couple days. I can't wait to show you how I build it, what it takes to build it. And if you're interested at all, make sure you subscribe because I'm going to tell you exactly what games to play once you've built your rig out. I'm going to show you the review for all this stuff. If I think it was worth it. Do I feel like I got cheated? Do I feel like I got buyer's remorse? Or am I like, oh my God, you've got to buy these things. All right. It's all coming here in the next week or two. So make sure you get ready. <laughs> We're off to the races. Oh, God. That's the last one. I'm sorry. I love you guys. Thanks for watching. I had so much fun making this video. I hope you enjoy it. <laughs>